Welcome to the ITDVDs.com YouTube channel. This is just a sample of the training available at ITDVDs.com. If you would like to see complete training, please go to ITDVDs.com. Now let's begin the sample. Troubleshooting direct access can definitely be challenging, but if we understand how it works in depth, troubleshooting is a little bit easier. It's never easy, but it'll become easier. So we have our client here, and when our client tries to create a tunnel with our direct access server, it depends on IPsec. In order to do that, it's going to use the client certificate on our client, and it's going to authenticate to our direct access server. Now, there's actually two tunnels that are created. The first one is called the infrastructure tunnel. The second one is called the intranet tunnel. So for the infrastructure tunnel, the client authenticates with first the computer certificate, and then it uses NTLM to authenticate. If that happens correctly, then it creates the intranet tunnel, which allows traffic to actually flow through to our internal network. And for that authentication to happen, first it uses the computer certificate, then it uses Kerberos. And when it uses Kerberos, it's actually authenticating to a domain controller. So with the intranet uh, tunnel, if we have any issues with that authentication to a domain controller, then that tunnel is not going to be created. Now, since we're using uh, certificates from an enterprise certificate authority, it's critical that the CRL distribution is available. So we've gone over that a lot, but it's, it's definitely important. So if that CRL distribution point is not available out on the Internet, then your infrastructure uh, tunnel is not going to be created. So that depends on that name being resolved externally, crl.itdvds.com. It depends on the domain controller publishing that CRL to wherever you have it at. We have it on R1 and also it being available on R1. Now once the tunnels are created, if they are created, the next major dependency is going to be that IP version 6 is actually working and functioning properly on our internal network. So if we have all of that, then direct access should work. Now R1, one of the big keys here, we're going to go over simple configuration things that we need to check, uh, is that on the public interface, IP version 6 is enabled. So I'm on R1. Let's just go to the properties of our network here. Go to change adapter settings. Go to public properties. IP version 6 needs to be checked. If not, your infrastructure tunnel is not going to be created. And this will actually be very difficult to troubleshoot. So that's why it's easiest just to check the configuration. Now I'll tell you why this is a little bit difficult to troubleshoot is because if you try to ping the IP version 6 address of like your domain controller from your client, a ping can go through successfully but that doesn't mean your infrastructure tunnel is set up because ICMP does not have to go through the tunnel. So this seems odd. It feels odd, but that's just the way it is. And a lot of times if you can actually ping the IP version 6 address of like DC01 in my case, you get it successful. But if you try to ping the name dc01.itdvds.local and it doesn't resolve, so the name doesn't resolve, then most likely you have an infrastructure tunnel problem. And definitely check that public interface on your direct access server. The other thing we want to check is the CRL distribution point on our client. So let's go check that. So here we are on our client. Let's just open up our MMC. Go to File, Add, Remove, Snap-in. Going to add our certificates for the computer account. Click Next and Finish and OK. Let's expand it out here. Expand out Personal, Highlight Certificates. Let's just double click on our client certificate. This is our NPS client certificate. Let's go to Details, go down, CRL Distribution Points, and we actually want to highlight our external one that we created. I'm going to go ahead and copy it. Just put it in Internet Explorer. 
paste it in, and it should ask us to download the CRL. So if it doesn't, then we have a CRL distribution point problem, and we need to figure out why it's not available on the Internet. Now another thing that we can do to check our configuration for IP version 6 and make sure it's working on our internal network is to actually take our laptop, connect it to our internal network, and disable IP version 4 on the laptop. We should be able to do everything. We should be able to resolve names just fine, get to our servers, all with IP version 6. If we can't, then we have a problem with IP version 6 and that's going to create a problem with direct access. So real quick, I'll show you how to disable IP version 4. So we're back on our client here. Let's just go to control panel, network and internet, network and sharing center, change adapter settings, and on our interface here, we'll go to properties, and we're just going to uncheck IP version 4, okay? And then we try to ping servers, make sure we can authenticate. That will confirm that our IP version 6 configuration is correct on our corporate network. So also on our client for troubleshooting, we can open up our firewall with advanced security and go to monitoring, go to security associations, Click on main mode and we should see some different tunnels. These are our tunnels. So the computer certificate and user NTLM, this is your infrastructure tunnel. Now that should be set up actually when you start your computer up. The Kerberos, which is the intranet tunnel, should show up if you try to access an external resource like DC01 the C drive. So if I go back here and refresh, then I should see a Kerberos. Now I may need to access some other resources uh, that are not our domain controller to get this to show up. But there it is. The computer certificates, the first, the second authentication, Kerberos, that's our intranet tunnel. So if we see this, normally we're in pretty good shape. And things are working properly. If we don't, then we know we could have a problem with our infrastructure tunnel uh, and we definitely have a problem getting at least to the internet tunnel to get that set up. So we've gone over uh, the configuration things that we really want to check. Uh, next we'll go over the commands that we can use to troubleshoot a bit more. Okay, so now let's go over some commands that can help us troubleshoot. It's going to open up a command prompt. First of all, IP config. That helps. Uh, it let us know, lets us know what type of tunneling technology we're trying to use. If none of them are configured, then it's just really not working. We probably have either a network connectivity problem or a certificate problem. Here you can see my Teredo tunneling interface has an IP address. That means I'm using Teredo. If IP HTTPS is has an interface or has an IP address, then we're using that HTTPS. If we see 6 to 4, then we're using 6 to 4. So that's kind of how we know what we're using. Now we can type in netsh DNS client, and we've seen this already, but let's go over it again. DNS client show state to see exactly where our computer thinks it is machine location. If we're outside the corporate network, it should say outside corporate network. If we're inside the corporate network and it says outside corporate network, uh, then we have a problem accessing our network location server. And to figure out where this client is trying to look for the network location server, we can type in this command reg query and it's just a key in the registry. We can use regedit to look at it as well. Slash v domain location determination URL. And this gives us the URL. We can see it's https nls.itdvds.local. So we want to make sure that's configured correctly. So another command we can run here is net sh namespace show effective policy. And this lets us know what DNS servers are configured when we're trying to connect via direct access. So these should be your domain controllers. So one thing we can do to try to troubleshoot is highlight one of these. 
and ping it to see if we have any kind of connectivity at all. And remember, we can ping it, and that doesn't necessarily mean that our infrastructure tunnel is up. Next, we would want to try domain name resolution. So we know we've got some sort of connectivity to our domain controller. Now let's try to resolve a name. Okay, and the name resolves. If the name didn't resolve, then we have that infrastructure tunnel problem. We need to go back to our configuration to try to figure out what's wrong. And we can also enable audit events so that we can actually get errors in the uh, event log to make sure to get more details about what's going on, why our tunnels are failing. So let's go over that command. So that command is auditpole.exe slash set slash subcategory in quotes IPsec main mode comma IPsec extended mode slash success enable and failure. So basically we're enabling auditing for IPsec. So once we do that, then if we're having problems, we can go to the event viewer. And we want to go to Windows Logs, Security, and we're going to look for failures. So when we see failures, in particular, we're going to see like IPsec main mode failure. And then we might be able to get some more information from that uh, error about what's causing the problem. So let's go over a couple more commands that are specific to a certain type of tunnel to try to get some more information. First one is netsh interface show actually 6 to 4 show relay. This will help us with the actual configuration here 206.25.11 you can see use relay in the resolution interval so and kind of see how it's configured and it may tip us off to see that it's actually configured wrong. Uh, then there's NetSH interface Teredo show state. Again this gives us our actual uh, Teredo configuration. We want to make sure the server is right. And then also we can see our local mapping and our external NAT mapping. Then there's NetSH interface HTTPS tunnel show interfaces. This is for IP HTTPS. We can see the URL it's trying to get to, so we can test it out and see if it's working. And we can also see the interface status. This will give us the last error if there was one. So another thing that we can run uh, on the server, on the uh, client access server as, as well as on the client, is an NL test space slash ds get dc colon space slash force and this is actually going to test our uh, connectivity to a domain controller now if we're having problems with our tunnel on the client most likely this isn't going to return anything but an error but we should run it on our direct access server the same command in that should definitely return a domain controller if it doesn't then most likely you have an issue with your authentication between your direct access server and a domain controller and you need to figure out why that is. And finally we want to check existing IPsec policies to make sure those aren't interfering. This can actually cause a lot of problems and they can be tough to figure out. It can actually be intermittent problems where everything's good, you're connecting for a bit and then for some reason the tunnel goes down and you're not able to connect again. That can be because of an existing IPsec policy either on the client, the server, uh, the domain controllers, or even in group policy. So we want to check our connection security rules on the direct access server, on the domain controllers, and on our client here to see if there are any that don't say direct access. And then analyze those and see, hey, do I need those? Uh, those could be causing a problem. And also we want to check group policy. So I'm on a domain controller here and I have, for example, an IPsec client group policy object that if I linked this to the domain or something, it could actually cause problems with direct access. So you want to see if you've got any IPsec direct uh, 
GPOs linked to the domain or even linked to domain controllers that can pr cause a lot of problems actually, especially with your intranet tunnel authenticating. So really quick, just a couple more things that we really want to pay attention to for the test, and of course they're important for the real world as well. If we're trying to troubleshoot name resolution to see if it's actually working properly, ping is probably the best way to do it. When we use NS lookup, it actually queries a specific DNS server, and that's going to be our external DNS server. As you can see, 206.75.12.3 for me. Uh, it's not going to use your name resolution policy table so that it it, you know, it's supposed to use external DNS when it needs to and use internal DNS when it needs to uh, for resolving local names. NS lookup's not going to do that, but ping is going to do that. For example, if I type in dc01.itdvds.local, it's going to come back unknown, unknown, unknown. And if I just type ping, dc01.itdvds.local, it resolves properly here. So ping's the way to troubleshoot name resolution uh, make sure it's working because our name resolution policy table if I type in net sh space namespace show and I could do a show policy or show effective policy I'll just do a show policy here we can see we've got settings for nls.itdvds.local and for just itdvds.local so if it's trying to resolve a name that ends with itdvds.local it's going to query these DNS servers it has configured. Otherwise, it's going to query our external DNS server. And this is called a name resolution policy table. Now, uh, you can see nls.itdvds.local uh, doesn't have any DNS servers configured, and that's actually by design. That's what we want so that when we're uh, direct accessed in to our network, so we're out on the Internet, but we're using direct access to get to our network, it doesn't resolve nls.itdvds.local, see it, and think that, oh, it's on my network, I shouldn't use direct access. So that's why we don't have any DNS servers with our uh, network location server URL. Another thing, if we go over to R1, which is our direct access server, and open up Windows Firewall with advanced security, we can see all the direct access connections that are growing through this particular server. We just expand out monitoring, expand out security associations, click on main mode. We can see the local address, which is this server, and then the remote address. So this is the client that's direct accessed in, and this is actually the IP address of our laptop. And if we want, we can go to a command prompt, and we can actually use nslookup now, and I can type in test.itdvds.local, which is the name of that laptop, and I can see here's the IP address of it that's registered in DNS and it matches up with the remote address on our security associations so I can see that okay test has an active direct access connection into our network so again we're checking this on our direct access server in Windows firewall with advanced security